our second session here. And I'm just making sure that the live stream is all set up. I'm doing some work. Um, I realized, and I'll sh I'm sure I'll restate this a lot of times as people come in, but I realized last time that um, I was having real trouble with the eyes. And I thought that the face was something that I was a little better at. And it turns out that I was rusty on anything having to do with the face. Because anytime I had done a face, I had been doing photo modification instead of drawing and going from there. So I kind of took some time out and did the grunt work. I kind of uh, took some time out and did the grunt work in between streams and really went through and got her line art figured out. Just kind of posting the link to the stream here. So, and I learned some things about doing the, um, about doing the line art and making it clean too. So one thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to give her feet. She doesn't have, eventually, I'll fix that later. But today we're basically gonna be painting the armor. And as you can see, I've already started that but I need to redo some of it because I realized, like, if you look at this original line, I've got to get rid of her line art, actually, for you to see this properly. If you look at this original line here on the armor along her abs, this curve doesn't, like, this line here going down her torso doesn't make sense because then it then points into her leg as opposed to, to straight down. So it made the proportion look a little off. So I'm going to redo, and I mean, this wasn't even really all that finalized anyway. Um, I did this pretty quickly, just practicing the other night, again, in between streams. So we're going to, essentially, we're going to even this back out and redo it. And we'll put the line art back in. Make sure I've got my... Uh, stream is up here. I'm sure I can see all my chats. I believe I can. Alright, now I just gotta get them to cascade in a way that I can see all the chats at the same time. I have a second, actually a second computer running over here so I can see this stuff. All right. So her line art is on this layer. And I need to make some changes to the face too. I, I repositioned her mouth a little bit because since her face is at a 45 degree angle, I'm going for cartoony on this. I'm going for stylized. But um, it just wasn't, you can get away with a little bit of foolishness. Um, a little bit of proportional stretching or perspective not being quite right when you're doing stylized, which is great because like I, I never went to formal art school or anything. I'm a musician. <laughs> um, but, you know, I try to draw on shapes and, and learn some stuff. So anyways, I got my line art up here. And as you can see, like the shape of the mouth has shifted a little bit. And, and there, there's a lot more progress here than when the last time you saw, saw her, her. And she was like this. No, we didn't even have the ab. I didn't even have the ab armor on there. So as you can see, I've kind of done some things in layers, added some contrast here. I'm trying to really define, and I struggled a lot with the shape of her nose too. Because every nose I think I had done for a long time was always you know, the same basic shape. And her nose just turned up just a little bit, right? And in the original sketch, um, in the sketch that's underneath all of this, her nose is pretty turned up, like pretty very turned up. And you can see some things about some things about her have changed. I would say they've even become a little bit more realistic since the sketch. If I flip back and forth here. You know, trying to get things that even though she's kind of an animated character and you know Still trying to make sure some of those things translate. So here we go, her line art, and I'm gonna add a layer effect and make her line art blue. So that when I bring it, the opacity of it down, and I, I've added this scar 
for her line art too because I don't want her to be just like I don't want her to look too nice. She's a and I may even add some battle damage to her armor. Because uh, if she's a soldier or if she's been in battle, you know, she's got her holographic map here and her weapon drawn and she's got a little grenade at her side. Uh, the reason that she has this look on her face is that she's she's in sheer focus mode, right? Sheer complete focus mode. Let's get in here and do some stuff. I need to redo the stuff with the abs. I believe that was on this layer down here. Really, I want to make most of my changes for things on layers on top and kind of work in stages. For this. Let's push this line up down even more on the opacity. Make sure I can see it. But that's about it. And you know, I really do like, I know I'm slow on the slow on the cuff here. I really do like this brush. If you take a look at the brush that I'm using, look at how textural that is. Like it it it's giving me more of a of a Corel painter vibe, which I've never used Corel Painter. But every thing I've seen done in Corel Painter, as opposed to being painted in Photoshop, sometimes you can't tell the difference. A lot of it has to do with the artist's style. But often I see things like this, where you've got this almost this real media look about the brushes, and Affinity has this nice one that I've been using. So we're going to grab painting brush, and I think I've been using brush. Is it this guy? It's not that brush. <laughs> that is most definitely not the brush I've been using. Is it this one? I still am getting the hang of painting in Affinity. It's similar to Photoshop in a, in a lot of ways. I think I just grabbed the exact same brush twice. Yeah, a lot of the, like a lot of the functionality that I'm used to in Photoshop has certainly carried over. Was it this guy? This is, what you're seeing here is me essentially making a rookie mistake. Earlier today, I was in here just kind of prepping the line art for this, and I was telling myself, oh, it's brush 64 not brush 64. All these brushes say 64 because they're 64 pixels, I think. It's like, this doesn't look like that. No. And this is kind of a part of affinity that I've struggled with a little bit, is that it treats your settings a little differently than Photoshop did when I was very used to using Photoshop. It wasn't a drawing brush I was using, was it? Excuse me while I... I think I was. I think I was using this drawing brush. Yeah, it would be great if it would, like, save the brush you were using something like that. But kind of the... And this is probably just me not knowing the optimal way to use the software, in my, in my defense. All right, let's get in here and do what we set out to do. So let's turn that line out back on. Yeah, we'll probably add that scar later. I haven't 100% decided on the scar. But again, I'm trying to make this character have some practicality. Right? So, try to make her armor realistic, like what would be armor, give her the leg armor, arms, shoulders, biceps, but she's got to be able to be nimble and move so her joints are open. Um, you know, I didn't want her armor to be ridiculous. 
as often happens with female characters, that it doesn't really make sense. Didn't want to do that. All right. Let's get in here and sample this color, and we're just going to even this mm -hmm. out and start over. Make sure I can see my swatches here and what color I'm working with. I'm at 100% opacity, which I guess doesn't matter, but I don't want to be swinging too wildly in here, so we're just going to even this out. We may even come back to it later. Something that you want to do when you're approaching something like this, and this, I mean, kudos to the guy who jumped into the stream the other night. Because he basically told me, you know, I was getting too fixated on the face. And again, I've since fixed the face because I needed my sketch to be better. That's really what it came down to. I kept trying to reconcile. I liked elements of the original sketch. Like I liked kind of the general look of focus and maybe even a little bit of disgust that she had on her face. Because it was like she's not messing around. And I was never quite getting that to translate. I wasn't capturing that in what I was seeing when I would paint it. And it just turned out that I needed to do a, a study in eyes, specifically female eyes um, that are, again, kind of stylized or in an animated style. So I really went and found some reference images of some other concept artists and just kind of looked at, you know, the general shapes, how they, you know, how the eyelids are a little bit um, nondescript over here on the outer part of the eye because the eyelashes kind of eclipse everything and that's where that's the fullest. And then I started looking at, like comparing that to looking at real people's faces and seeing how they got from point A to point B. So we've roughed in some of this, but we need to keep going. And essentially that's that's what this is. That's what this comes down to. We're going to add another layer here and just keep working. I have this all in a group so I can turn the painting off and on at any time. Get our light background back in here. So one of the things that I've been learning over time, and that was brought to my attention again the other night, is that you really you really don't want to get too hung up right when you're first getting started on the details. It's so easy to do. So I'm going to give that a quick little border. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to, I'm going to pivot to a darker color. This is a rear arm, so this is going to be more in shadow. I'm going to go a little darker here underneath this shoulder pauldron thing. You now we'll have a really tight little Tight little shadow there. Let's zoom in and get in here and be a little bit more accurate. And it's okay if this is a little this is a little messy. Come back to it later for a little shine on there. Same thing. Get a tight little shadow between this bicep plate um, and her arm, underneath her tricep plate and her arm. And that can even stick over a little bit if we want to show that it's three-dimensional. Give a little shine on top, that creates some separation. There. It's good for now, right? And even if we turn off just after that quick little, barely spend any time on that, you can see the shape of those armor plates. It's rough, you know, it's a little messy, it's not sharp, it's not clean yet, but that's okay. Let's keep this wagon train moving. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get in here with a dark, just just a dark value, and really outline where her sort of flexible cloth or Kevlar mesh is here, behind the breastplate and the shoulder plate, so that we can, that'll help us see the profile of the shapes of those parts of the armor a little easier. And later on, I'll go in and we will add like that weave look to those things. Like it's a maybe it's a Kevlar or some kind of future 
future fabric under there. Probably just give it sort of a carbon fiber crisscross. But having that, this, these areas dark um, here on our legs where you can just kind of see the pants. And I guess, let me look at my brush down on this. Size, jitter, pen pressure. Yeah. I guess I need to make some decisions about this, like, mag holster thing that I designed for her. Let's just... Oh, oh took a second. Took a second to render. And let's just kind of get it in here. Again, being really rough. I went outside my lines a little bit there. Wasn't what I wanted to do. We'll just kind of put the shape of it in here. Now, would this be over that leg plate? I think it'd be under it. Because that leg plate would... It's not a greave. I don't know what you call it. That thigh armor would slip up over the top. So really, this needs to come across and be really defined. There's its top border. And I might be overstating this spot because it's going to fade into shadow. Here, there would definitely be a really marked kind of shine on the edge of the armor. Because our light source is in front of her. We can do the same thing over here and right now since I'm thinking about it. Um, we'll get this her little mag plate there. And to create a little separation, let's, let's put just a touch of shadow in there underneath. And we'll let that shadow kind of bloom out toward the back. Since again, our light source is in front of the character. Again, underneath here to show that this is sitting on top of the pants. We'll put a little shadow under the belt. I, you know what, I need to bring my opacity down if I'm going to need a belt shadow because that's going to be really small and tight. Got her utility belt here. And I like this idea that things are magnetic, right? So her, her grenade that I added over here has probably just got another little, you know, a little magnetic strip that it's on. And I think to show that this is tech and that this isn't that this isn't just, you know, some design on her pants, I think we gotta give this a shine too. Let's push this up a little. push out this edge. The same thing on the back one. Got to be careful because again this is on kind of the back the back part of her hip and we're moving away. The light source is in front but I think I can get away with I think I can get away with pushing the contrast a little bit. Um, let's I did so many iterations of line art. Yeah like it's messy. It's not great right now but it looks like something. Okay, same thing. We'll go to our darker color. Get where her sleeve is exposed here. And, you know, later we'll add... Okay. Later we'll add fabric folds to that and stuff. And my layers aren't super... Is They're not as organized as I want them to be. So don't... Don't take that as, don't take the state of my layers right now as, as any indication of best practices. The reason I like that is because I am still kind of getting my groove down into how I do this. And so I went through a lot of iterations fighting with myself about the shape of some of the armor plates and like making sure her facial features, even though they're cartoony, still made sense. Let me see that this little armor plate here needs to be a little bit more defined. So let's 
Let's give it a definite edge. Doesn't need to jump out though. Let's make sure that's not too bright. Uh, we'll blend that together later. And then I've got kind of these straps that are holding chest plate on. So let's block those in. And those I guess could even be, they could be a darker color than, or they could be a darker value than what I'm making them. But I think, I think if you want to see them, which we do, then we don't want to make them, uh, we don't want to make them darker. All right, so the belt, I imagine the belt will be pretty bright, so I'm going to, or will it, or would the belt be darker? It would look cooler. Well, the belt should match the rest of the armor, and I've and I've been leaning toward the armor being like a, like a, almost a white, since we're going for that kind of clean, futuristic feel. And it'll make her, if I add battle damage, like some burn marks on the armor, it'll make that really stand out. So, um, something about verbalizing all the thoughts. I don't typically talk while I'm doing this. I haven't, well, I've never streamed doing art before, but something about verbalizing these ideas actually helps me make decisions. Because I've gone back and forth in my head about, well, what color should da 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 be? What, you know, what value, what color, when I do color eyes, what color will our eyes be? What color, you know, will complement the armor? Um, what color will the lights on her armor be? Would they be like a teal? Would they be a color that could match her eyes and make her look really striking? Would they be like an orange to give her a really unique color scheme? And orange, I think orange and white just look good together, to be honest. So here we got the basic skeleton of the belt. And then I'll go in here and do this darker color and we'll add these, these squares, this kind of square design that's on them. Fill that in. Fill that in. I hope you all are having some time off for the holidays. Hope you have some some good plans for Thanksgiving. That doesn't always mean big plans, right? Sometimes sometimes it just means sitting around and watching movies with the family, which is probably what we're gonna do. And it sounds great. And the belt buckle, yeah, I might, those squares look a little herky-jerky, but again, we're roughing things in, right? We're just roughing them in. That press plate looks a little weird. We'll fix that later. Well, not here. We're going to do this. Put this little shadow here, because this is just a connector plate, and it sits back. Let me get a little bit more down here, a little bit more shadow. I don't know if I'm convinced about the shape of that shadow. Like this. Down. Around a little bit. And well, that's something. That's weird. It's okay. I don't want to get too granular on my details at the moment. So even, even just in a, and this is something that I've been trying to get better at, which is working quicker. So even in just a few minutes that I've been working here, all these changes have been made that quick. Man, when I first started doing this, that much would have taken me two hours. My goodness. Again, I would always work at this. Super 
super low opacities. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's do this rib arm or rib armor. This kind of her ab plates here, right? So I'm just gonna kind of make these each a big kind of a lighter arc, lighter streak here. Another light arc. And I know it's going outside the lines on the side. We'll clean that all up later. Later will be about making the details cool and tight. And what I what I have is you can see this little plate sticking out underneath the belt buckle. And that's I, I that's part of this of her ab armor. I figured it would be cool to like have it be its own, you know, really defined piece. Give it a little, a little shadow specifically on this side. And then make that, a, make that wrap around. Now, of course, there is going to typically be just a little bit of shadow all the way around. It's going to be way tighter here, a little bit bigger and fuzzier over here because it's going to get diffused, right? Down into crease here, darken that up. Ah, you know what? I just leave that a little bit. Might actually, well, we'll we'll get all the, the fabric folds and stuff figured out later. So she's got a light panel on her shoulders, going across the chest plate, and then I gave her light panels on the sides of these thigh plates. So let's get in here and make sure that I've got a visual cue as to where they are. Really stripe, like give that a nice strong stripe that in. And I've been thinking about, because this is something I used to struggle with, how to show that they're lights. And I think what I'm going to do is, you know, typically when I've seen stuff that is a light, it's got a really, really light white core. And then it almost, it immediately falls off into some mid-tones so that you can give that light core um, that, well, you can give that light course in color, right? Because if the middle's white, it's not any color. So if you make the very middle white, and then I'll give it, this will be like a finishing touch. I can't do it now, or it'll be hard to paint around it. But at the end, we'll give it a little hazy glow, too, all around it. So that it's very kind of luminous and particulate. I haven't I haven't given this little light core to any of the other light spots yet. So we'll, you know, here. Oh, I'm on my selection tool. I hit a button. So we'll go ahead and I have this on white? It doesn't seem like I, I didn't. I was like, nothing's changing. That's why I turned up my opacity. I couldn't understand why things weren't. Yeah. Got this like, white light core in the middle. So we'll make sure that all this stuff is glowing when we're done. Her suit status indicator, just cool lights. I I can try to rationalize it and say it'll be like her health gauge. It'll you know we'll make it orange because she's been in battle but she's still fighting. We'll make it blue because it, no, it, it'll just be whatever color looks nice because it'll look cool, and that will probably be the whole rationale. Might have to do something about the shoulder piece. Might have to give it a stop. Let's go ahead and do that now. Um, I, this isn't in the sketch, but I feel like this we would see the back of this shoulder plate, right? It would have a very defined end would be coming up to a point there. Oh, 
off a little bit. Yeah, that even makes more sense that way, right? So we've um, done these, done this general shape. Now let's get the, uh, the, the crease between the plates going here. And I actually think, no, this will be fine. We'll do it this way. Just add in the shadow underneath. That'll be our next step to the dynamic of them. Show that they are kind of laid over each other, over overlapping armor plates. And then, like that on its own is not going to be enough. So we're, I'll give it a, I'll give them a, a nice shine over the top, right along the edge, where the light, you know, is accumulating. Turn off my line out for a minute. It's hard for me. I haven't quite been able to determine what I'm doing. There we go. What's up? And it's something that I learned. You know, it's amazing how much more defined and I mean, my these edges are still pretty fuzzy. Once I really have things worked out, I'll go. You know, we'll be getting in there with. The hardness of my brush isn't the issue so much as I'm still working at a, at a you know, relatively lower opacity. I guess the brush is a little fuzzy that I'm using. But yeah, see, look how much more defined that looks. Now we haven't added, you know, we got to add the dynamic of the shadow to it a little bit. You know, because she exists in three-dimensional space. So even just, even just adding that in. Boom. Such a huge difference. Right, moving down. Oh no. I never finished what was going on with this arm and this <laughs> look at how messy my gray is. I mean we'll fix that later. Let's get back in here. With a pretty dark color. Pretty dark. I keep saying color. They are colors. They're values. Get in here, really, just really make sure that this is safe and sound. Things are getting a little out of hand, a little messy on the outside, so I'll Push that back. Yeah. All right, so we're going to make her bracers. Um, I want this. I know I want this to be a screen with some data on it of some of some kind. But we're going to you know separate them by making them again lighter. In color. And you know what? I actually have a cool idea for a, a highlight. So I'm going to duck down a couple of couple of value levels here. Because I want to give them a big banded highlight right across the side where the light is coming from. So I'm just kind of blocking out the shape. Don't worry, we'll get that little indentation, that little design in there soon. But let's just get this done first. Get that all filled in.
that can almost just sort of stay a flat gray right now. I, I think I'm gonna like superimpose some nifty nifty graphics onto there or something. So we'll, she's got her this little kind of this little two tone notch, much like the belt. You'll notice I have a habit of adding these kind of like little polygonal, 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 polygonal things. So now we're gonna go. We're gonna put in like this. Well, let's give it an you know, give it its edge, which is gonna be way more pronounced here. This is the front in relation to the light. And then we're just gonna give it a nice metallic band. Boom! There's your highlight. darker over here as it is in the back. Some dimension to that. Yeah, it's okay. Might change some things about it later, but again, our goal today is just like, keep moving forward. So the hand. Oh, hands. Um, I have to make a decision. She's got an armor plate on the back of her carpal bones back of her hand. I, I, <laughs> it's a very ambiguous shape the way I sketched it. So uh, I guess we have to give this a shape. So we're gonna, I mean, this is fine. It's fine, right? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna make her hands fully covered in gloves. So I'm. I'm gonna actually make those this darker color. It means I won't. <laughs> it actually. It also means I can fudge the anatomy of her hands just a touch too. Not saying I can't do hands, but like faces, it's something that I'm. I will admit that. Well, no. You know, I've done some pretty decent. You know, and some decent hands. It's wrapped around her weapon here, so there's the thumb. There's the trigger finger, and this is where we, I'm going to actually get a, get a black pulled out here because we've got to, we still have to be able to separate the fingers. So we're going to do that this way. I'm actually using a darker my black here. To show the separation of those digits. Let's keep blocking this in. Just straight that. So again, we got a trigger finger here. Oh, small detail I just realized. The way she's gripping her gun, her finger's on the trigger. I was going to rationalize that just now by saying, ah, oh, well, she's in combat. She's in a combat situation. But if she's highly trained, she would have trigger discipline. So let's <laughs> let's go in and change that. So let's turn our painting off for a second. Let's go to our line art, turn off our color overlay. Bring it back up. There we are. Alright. Yeah, her finger would not be on the trigger. It would be along the side of the weapon because she doesn't want to shoot herself in the foot. 
And she's smarter than that. She knows better than that. Her mentors obviously train her better than that. So let's fix it. Go back to the brush. My basic, just my basic brush here. And uh, so here we've got the first hand bone. There would be the knuckle here. So we have one stretch of finger, second stretch, third stretch, and I wasn't painting in black, I was, I was drawing with that charcoal -y color. Right, so again, and now, I'm, now it's too thick. So we've got our first finger bone, to her second, to her third, and there's the tip of her finger. It's going to come back down. Maybe it's just going to kind of shoot, shoot. We'll determine later if her finger is proportional. And of course there's going to be the trigger mechanism for the weapon is going to be under starting under there somewhere. So I still need to make sure that I don't just leave out details and be lazy. And you wouldn't see much of it because of the position of her finger, but well well make sure that this trigger well is you know it's here actually let's see your hand my hand goes from my chin right to about the middle of my forehead so, does that scale for her? That, <laughs> I, probably what I just did looked really weird. Um, I'm just going to draw a marquee there, and then we're going to move it. She has kind of small hands. Well, that was my middle finger. If I, you know, from my chin, it's right above my brow bone. Hey, I did pretty good. Her hand looks small, but she is kind of a little lady. At any rate, definitely feel better about her having some trigger discipline. She's a pro. She wouldn't just be walking with her finger ready to fire unless it's pointed, unless she intends on firing the weapon. She would know that. She's a pro. Let's make sure our middle finger... <laughs> Long tool. Make sure our middle finger doesn't get lost here. Well, need to brush. There we go. Let's see. It would be a little longer than this one. I'm going to curve down. And that pinky is doing fancy pinky things back there. I don't think we need that. I think we need to come up and just wrap around. Yeah, that's better. I mean, the posture of that hand's a little strange, but she's in motion. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. That'll be just fine. Um, the only thing I'm questioning is, should that finger look like it's sitting a little bit more on top? Do I need to rotate it? Can't hurt. Let's try it. Let's 
So I'm going to grab the freehand selection tool. I'm going to select just the line art of the finger itself. saying is, does it need to be kind of like that? Maybe, and perhaps one other thing I need to fix here is that her, f is that her finger wouldn't be, you, it's not, wouldn't be a perfect side profile, right? So you wouldn't see the tip like that, the way I had drawn it. It would actually be more, be more rotated. So I'm not even sure that the change I made was a change that needed to be made. I think the, the more needful change might be just to ever so slightly do this. Paint brush. Just to ever so slightly turn it sideways. Just me, or does it still seem like finger needs to be longer? Second knuckle, third knuckle, bring it around town. Might make that longer later, but again, today we are not getting hung up. Today we're moving forward. Paint. Look at all this. Look at all that we've done. In like 30 minutes. Boom. 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 It's pretty cool. Alright, we're gonna have to rework. <laughs> we're gonna have to rework all this though. Which is fine. It didn't take me that long to begin with. So let's get our let's get our line art blue again. And the reason I'm turning it blue so that it's easier for me to see the difference between the line art and the grayscale stuff that I'm doing underneath. And I always kept things in black and white and painted underneath the black and white. Like I could get the job done and I did get the job done, but I just would run into such difficulties where I was working directly underneath a line and it became hard to discern what difference I was making and what was just the dark line over the top. I'm using a drawing brush. One of these fellas. That one? Is it this one? Is it this one? I think it's this one. Mixed media, boys. Select this color. Bring up the digit. at 100% opacity, that's what I'm doing. Gosh, maybe it was a painting brush. I feel like it was. This, I think it was this. It wasn't that. I don't, I don't even know if it matters. Oh, and I'm going to change the underlying gray to match this. I'm like, something feels wrong here. So we've got to get rid of all of our details. 
Obviously, I've been painting on the wrong layer just now. I'd really like to know what layer that is. The important thing is that we undo it. God, I caught that. Alright, so we need to go on our long gray. And just remember we're on this painting brush. Go back to basic. Any one of these is fine. We just need to sample this color. And make sure we have some opacity. Get this in here. There's the finger. The nice finger. We don't do that other stuff. And I tightened this pinky up. She's not being dainty, pinky with it. No reason for her to be dainty with it, it's a weapon. Why are you on the eraser, dude? Hey. There, I, I'm either either it's a button that I don't know I'm hitting, or there are sometimes little bitty glitches that I've run into. Yeah, nothing I can't work on. All right, Go back on track. Select that color, go back to my brush, go back to my brush brush, which was this, this the, the new one I've just now picked. Turn our opacity down, so it doesn't look like I did it in Microsoft Paint in 1995. Whoa. Dude. That size jitter is just out of here. Rotation jitters are being a little silly too. I want to be able to have some accuracy here, guys. There it is. Trigger discipline. Voila. She has it. And let's get it down to more black. Whoa, that's aggressive. Make sure we articulate every finger here. We give this a little bit of a shadow underneath too. There's another finger. There's another finger. Really make sure this shadow is noticeable. We give it a little. It's going to be a tension point in the glove, so we give it a little crease here. That's where the thumb is. And that's gonna that's gonna spread out because of just the shape of the hand. Give it another little fold. Looks a bit more right, right? We'll give her little armor plates some three dimensionality here. Give it some give it a nice Shine. Yeah. We'll talk about that pistol later. I think, uh... Well, no. No, we're doing roughs. We're roughing it. <laughs> so... We're gonna make this... The slide on the front of it a little bit... I guess this heat sink slide looking thing on the front of it. A little lighter, and we'll make more of the, like a gunmetal gray, the internal workings back there.
and then the actual actual muzzle itself too will be that same kind of gunmetal gray. And again, I, I think I, I wouldn't say it's just a theme with just her. I think it's something that I do is this these like rectangular cutouts in things. And of course, this won't all won't be one flat value when everything's said and done, because the gun does it exist in three-dimensional space. And therefore, this side will be a little bit more in shadow. For now, I'm just kind of blocking it in. As you do, let's give it some get some shinies. All kinds of shinies. Here, darken up this side slightly, and then get even darker, get in these notches. It looks like something I might have to use some Photoshop tools on it later because I didn't draw it perfectly geometrically correct. This is not this is not perfectly parallel with this as it should be. I suppose I can fix that later. Let's uh, give it. This is going to be pretty important though for the form of the thing. Let's give it a nice long shine down the side here. Yeah. And then I didn't draw, really I didn't draw a lot of mechanisms in this weapon because I, I figured it probably doesn't shoot regular projectiles, right? It most likely fires um, energy bolts of some kind. So let's, but I do need to kind of make some functional choices here. So let's you know dig this in. Make sure something's happening here. Um, this little firing pin looking thing, why don't we give it its own little outline? Give just a touch of highlight here on the back end. Do the same thing on the firing pin. The the firing pin. Um, and I think I'll play with the details of this later. Maybe I'll put some ornamentation on there. You know, it's a, a space, it's like an energy weapon. Well, here, why don't we give it like an energy gauge on the top? Yeah, why don't we give it like, um, and we'll make it, yeah, we'll make it match the color of the lights. Why don't we, yeah, why don't we just give it like a light, a light band? to match what's going on with the rest of our armor. So we'll just give it like this, this kind of thing. And then maybe some, some tick marks next to that. Just some engraved the kind of tick marks here. And, uh, we're going to go full white in the middle of it. Again, since we're going to make this a, a light. Go back to a darker color. Give this a definitive border as I'm going to do on all the other spots as well, but I'm not there yet. But since I'm 
sitting here ideating about this gun. And let's give it like a let's give it like a model number up top. So we're gonna put like E E S. We'll call it E S dash four nine. Or E five. I'll leave that up to you. E five dash four nine and like really utilitarian kind of blocky blocky script. E S four nine. What does that mean? I don't know. It doesn't mean anything. It's just on the weapon. It's not parallel. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's redo that. Actually, I might be making that harder than it's got to be. I guess I could use the type tool. But... Spin our canvas here. Why don't we use? I was gonna say why don't we use a guide, but if I just if I just really commit that this is my bottom line. E E S looks like a five, but we'll say that the designation always is two letters and then two numbers. E S four ES49. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe it's the model of the weapon. Maybe it's her soldier number. Use your imagination. And to make, make sure that it looks engraved, let's give it some highlights around the around the outer edge of the text. Don't necessarily have to do it on you know every corner of the text but in enough places that it cleans up the sides and that again it gives us a visual cue that this is engraved into this weapon it's official it's a serial number or something ES49 whatever that means we set our rotation All right, so I think that's going to be it for now. I might be back later tonight, um, but just to kind of recap, like look at all the progress that's been made in an hour. All those armor details, just sailing right through. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Maybe even later tonight. Make sure you save your work.